Welcome to another video of General Chemistry 1. This is Jennifer Sinyel, your teacher for this subject. Our topic for today is actually about atoms. In this video, we would be discussing a brief history of the atomic theory. We also have your atomic particles and then later on, we'll have your electronic configuration. Okay? So, history of atomic theory. So, there are different scientists who propose different atomic models. So, first, we have Democritus, okay? So, Democritus is actually the first person to come up with the idea of atom. And he believed that all matter was composed of indivisible particles called atoms or atomos, okay? So, we also believe that different atoms are of different sizes and they have different properties, okay? So, next, we have John Dalton and he is said to be the father of atomic theory, Okay, so here are some of the postulates of Dalton's atomic theory. So first, he said that all matter is composed of extremely small particles called atoms. So, ginamit na niya yung term of Democritus. So next, all atoms of a given element are identical, having the same size, mass, and chemical properties. Okay, so according to Dalton, all atoms of different elements are different. And he also said that atoms cannot be created, divided into smaller particles, or destroyed. Okay? And last, Dalton actually also proposed that atoms combine indefinite whole number ratios to make compounds. So you could not make or you could not use half or a quarter of um, an element to form a compound. Okay? So next we have Joseph John Thomson, or commonly known as your J.J. Thomson. So he used cathode rays to prove that Dalton's solid ball model could be broken into smaller particles. So his setup is actually this cathode ray tube, and he was later on credited with discovering electrons. Okay? So in his experiment, he actually um, put a tube in a magnetic field, and he predicted that the stream would actually travel in a straight path. Okay, however, on his observation, he saw the curving, okay, of the particles from a negatively charged particle, or I mean from the negatively charged plate to the positively charged plate, okay. So, it has been intriguing for um, Thomson. So, he recalled, also, if we could still remember, diba, like charges repel each other and objects with unlike charges attack each other. So, from this experiment, Thomson concluded that the stream of charged particles had something negatively charged, and then later on he called them your electrons. So Thomson is actually known for his plum pudding model. Okay, so Thomson's plum pudding model is a positively charged sphere that has negatively charged electrons scattered inside. Okay, so it's like raisins in the plum pudding. Okay, so overall the atom is neutral atom because the atom had the same number of positive and negative charges. So from Thomson's experiment, scientists concluded that the atoms were not just neutral spheres, but somehow composed of electrically charged particles. Okay? So next we have Ernest Rutherford. So he actually took Thomson's plum pudding model and modified it. So he used another experiment, so the Goldfell experiment, to discover the existence of an atomic nucleus and Protons. So this is prov This was proven in his later experiments. Okay. So here in this gold foil experiment, so you have your gold foil. Then this is the source of your alpha particles or charged particles. So he expected that it would simply pass through this gold foil. Okay. However, um, he noticed that some are deflected. Yeah. Ito na lang. Look at this picture. So, he expected that your alpha particles would go flow or it would go straight to your atoms, okay, or to your atom. However, some are deflected, some bounce back, while some travel the straight path, okay? So, from Rutherford's gold foil experiment, um, he concluded that the atom contains a positively charged nucleus, and that this nucleus contains almost all of the mass of the atom but occupies a very small volume of the atom, okay? So, the negatively charged electrons occupied most of the volume of the atom. And he also concluded that the atom is mostly empty space, okay? So, yeah, um, yung release pala dito sa gold foil experiment are actually um, positively charged particles, okay? So, baka may nag-bounce back. Sabi nga natin, di ba, like charges repel while um, 
opposite charges attract. Okay? So, bakit siya nag-repel? Ibig sabihin may something siyang tinamaan. Okay? At yung something na yun is actually, um, one of the deflected particles is actually your um, positively charged. Okay? Nung nag-repel siya. Okay? So, yan. So, we also have another model by Niels Bohr. So, he actually worked in another Ford's lab and he wondered why electrons are not attracted to the positively charged nucleus and it simply clustered around it. Okay? So, he actually disproved Rutherford's planetary model and he experimented with light and its interaction with matter to develop a new model which um, most of us follow now. Okay? So, the Bohr's energy level model actually tells us that electrons are arranged in circles around the nucleus and that each circle has a different energy. Yan siya, okay? So, electrons are in constant motion, traveling around the circle at the speed of light, and electrons can jump from one circle to the next, okay? But they can't go to the nucleus because they are traveling too fast to be fully attracted, Okay? So, we'll have a separate discussion on this um, energy level model, okay? Now, Bohr actually proposed the following. So, first, he proposed that the protons and neutrons are in the nucleus and that electrons can only be certain distances from the nucleus, okay? He also proposed that the electrons orbit the nucleus at fixed energy levels and that the electrons must absorb or emit a fixed amount of energy to travel between these energy levels, okay? Now, from the different uh, models, so, mas ginagamit na natin ngayon or mas appropriate na ang Bohr's energy level model, okay? But again, um, pwede pa din ito ma-disprove ng mga future chemists or future scientists if ever they will be discover another concept about your atoms, okay? Now, basic recap of your atoms and the subatomic particles, so... You know this already, your atom is the smallest unit of an element and it consists of a central nucleus composed of your positively charged protons and your um, neutrally charged neutrons and you have now electrons um, circling around them. So, I apologize for the wrong model, okay? So, hindi ganito yung itsura talaga ng um, atomic model natin, okay? So, here are the properties of our subatomic particles. So, the charge, proton is positive, electron is negative, neutrons are, they don't have a charge, okay? So, the, the charge number or the relative charge are 1 for proton, negative 1 for electron, and it's 0 in neutron. So, these are the values for the rest mass and their relative mass, okay? Now, once you know the properties, or once you know the number of protons, electrons, and neutrons, it could actually give you the atomic number and also the mass number of an element, okay? So, in your periodic tables, you would see here, for example, uh, you would see now an element symbol, and then you have now um, a superscript, which is the mass number, and um, a su superscript, I mean, tama, superscript would be your mass number, and then your subscript would be your atomic number. But it depends, okay? Usually, ganito yung appearance sa periodic table. Okay? So, the atomic number is actually represented by Z. So, it is. it also represents the number of protons in, in the nucleus, and it also represents the number of electrons. So, dapat balance yung number ng protons and number of electrons. Para neutral ang um, charge niya. Okay? Now, the mass number is the number of protons and neutrons. Okay? So, the number of protons and neutrons would give you the total mass of your element. Okay? Now, um, I want you to screenshot this activity. So, for example, you may do this at home. Okay? So, example lang natin. If your atomic number is 18 and your mass number is 35, Ilan ang, number, ilan ang protons natin? And ilan ang electrons? Okay, so balikan natin. Sabi natin, atomic number would represent the number of protons and the number of electrons. Okay, so if the atomic number is 18, the number of protons is also 18. The number of electrons is 18. Now, the number of neutrons, we're simply going to subtract now from the mass number. So, 35 minus 18 would be 17. So, the number of neutrons would be 17. Okay? So, I hope you could also do the following examples at home.
at your own um at your own pace okay so if you have questions you may ask me later you may send me a personal message regarding this okay now isotopes so isotopes are actually the atoms of the same element with different numbers of neutrons okay so neutrons ang nabago so example for hydrogen we have three isotopes you have the protium so this has one proton and one electron but no neutrons we also have the deuterium, which has one proton, one electron, and one neutron. And we have the tritium. So this occurs as fewer than one in 1017 atoms in a sample of natural hydrogen. Um, this one is um, a radioactive isotope of hydrogen. Okay. So be, um, other examples of isotopes, siguro if you have heard of carbon-14. So originally, it's carbon-12, but you have your carbon-14. Okay. So... Why do we need to know your isotopes? Okay, so the relative atomic mass is actually computed by the average atomic mass. So you get the isotopic mass and you multiply that to its abundance. Okay, so the mass of an atom is concentrated in the nucleus where the protons and neutrons are found. Okay, so we don't have to worry about this because it has been already um, recorded. Okay, it is already provided, yung atomic mass. But again, for example, you are given the isotopic mass and you just wanted to confirm what type of or what element is that. You could actually compute for the average atomic mass. Okay? So example, I have here element X. So element X has a mass number of 35 and mass number 37. So provided are the isotopic masses and their percentage abundance. Okay? So, the isotopic mass of the first isotope is 34.969. And then, yung second one is 36.966. Okay? So, to get the average atomic mass, so you simply multiply that to the percentage abundance. Okay? So, bakit naging 0.7553? So, this one is percentage. Kinavert ka na siya into its decimal. Okay? So, computing this... Try to check it on your calculators. The average atomic mass is 35.458. Okay? Now, this one is for you to um, try. Actually, nabibigay ko na pala yung, ano, yung solution. But now, here, I have three elements. I need three isotopes. So, we have 16, 17, and 18. Okay? Provided are the different isotopic mass and abundance. So, madali lang naman mag-compute ng average atomic mass because the data would be provided. Okay? So, you simply multiply now the, the isotopic mass with this percentage, percentage abundance. You add them up and you have your average atomic mass. So, that would be all for our discussion of atoms. So, continuation of this would be about electronic configuration and also about the other electronic properties of your atoms. Okay? So, I hope you learned something from this video. Bye!